I, I believe you can really lead from any chair and truly desire louder voices from women. And that's why an institute such as this, a program such as this is so critical. It may not be the timing now, but in the future, you practice those skills and your leadership is, is essential for our organizations. So based on this experience, um, this is the advice I would share. And I started calling them the 10 rules to keep in mind. And then I thought, Mm -mm. Most of the women um, that I know would rather prefer breaking rules than following them. So maybe their guidelines or recommendations may be more palatable. Um, so here they are. And I think we're going to share some of those. The first one is know yourself, your strengths, and never diminish or apologize for them. There is a difference between being humble, and being self-dismissive. I hired often based upon humility, drives, brains, and coachability. Being humble doesn't mean minimizing your strengths. Accept who you are, build on your strengths, and don't try to be who others think you should be. Be you. Be proud of your drive and desire to succeed. Know what your greatest talents are, learn them, hone them, and use them. The second guideline is put your game face on and never let them see you sweat. Always tap into your confidence in yourself, even if you have to dig very deep to find it. Even when you have to tighten that gut to feel the strength, Live in that no fear mode. Self-confidence in your self-confidence engenders and strengthens others' confidence in you. And I'm not perfect in this regard. I will admit at times we are all inconsistent with our preferred leadership. But sometimes I'd need to connect with those who had my back and recoup and then go right back at it. So I'd regain my confidence and work towards being self-confident consistently. Third, don't make the reality of gender bias an excuse and give up or become angry about it. Accept the reality, recognize it, challenge it, navigate through it with thoughtful skill and purposeful intent to achieve. Fourth, own 100% responsibility for achieving results through relationships. In this complicated business world, which isn't, as you know, getting any simpler, it is exceedingly rare that a single individual produces results. Typically, it requires a team or multiple teams to, to accomplish great things. Results are achieved through relationships. I really um, like Kim Scott's book, Radical Candor. Her message to care personally and challenge directly resonated with me and I really consider it a must read. Five, speak up, advocate for, your success, for yourself, Take credit when it is due, certainly while recognizing the team's contribution, because as I said, everything is a team and you need to be a good team partner. Um, the book Lean In by Cheryl San Sandberg, Women Work and the Will to Lead, um, I do think is worth reading and discussing with colleagues. Number six, check your ego, but don't give it away. If you are presented with a goal or a project or a um, outcome that is needed that is clearly hampered by gender bias and no amount of persistence, influence, um, your best efforts will change that dynamic. Um, what I've done is assign a mail to the project to get, the part, to get it achieved or partner with the mail. You just have to recognize that if it's a barrier that you can't 
get through? How else are you going to go around it? So um, I've used strategy to overcome the bias or build that diverse um, coalition. Seven, seek advice and pursue, seek advice from other leaders, regardless of gender, and maintain and pursue strong relationships with smart, diverse thinking women. You'll learn a ton um, and you'll have a lot of laughs and a lot of fun along the way. You may have to be the one who initiates these relationships and don't wait for others to pursue you to just go for it. Number eight, create your own diverse network or club. If you recognize that you're quote, not wanted in a particular men's club or men's circle, don't force it. Include those, create your own network, your own diverse network, our club, includes those who wanna be in it and enjoy the freedom to connect with whom you choose to connect. I'm a firm believer that time is one of our most precious and finite resources. So enjoy the fun of connecting with whom brings you to the light. Number nine, pay it forward for other women. Whenever you see potential, their potential and have that, have opportunity to pay it forward. Open the doors, break the glass ceiling with them, coach, mentor, promote, or throw a lifeline to other women when needed. By lifeline, I mean, if another woman, another female colleague is demonstrating a self-limiting behavior, throw her a lifeline with compassionate clarity, point it out to her, have her back, but be clear. As, men, as I mentioned earlier from McKinsey Research in 2011, men are promoted on potential and women are promoted based upon prior, previous achievements. So look for women with potential. Celebrate success of achievement, both your own and that of other women. Number 10, advocate for fair, just treatment of women. Call it out when you see the barriers, question the barriers or indifference to women or their input whenever you see it. Be inclusive whenever possible and create opportunities to highlight the contributions of other women. Now, all that said, if you think I'm saying the work of including women and facilitate, facilitating their progress as leaders is a, just a job, for women, think again. Male leaders need to be intentional and active as well. And truly Barack Obama should, could have been, more, been amplifying women's voices in meetings too. So here's a few steps men can take. First, actively seeking and, in, and listening to women, to input from women requiring that all leadership searches result in a pool of applicants and finalists that is gender diverse. And quite frankly, ditto on many other forms of diversity, but I think that's another session or talk. Um, men need to treat women as equal, expect leadership from women and positive results, recognize the strengths and talents give credit when credit is due, engage with women in authentic, crucial conversations, provide the encouragement and opportunity, and then critically examining the inherent biases that hold women back, including that ugly um, accomplishments versus issues that I raised earlier. Last year with the death of Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, we lost a truly inspirational woman leader, a woman of both accomplishment and potential. She never gave up fighting for her own seat at the table or a bench, <laughs> seat at the bench, if you will, and the seats of all other women. 
She once said, women belong in all places where decisions are being made. It shouldn't be that women are the exception. On this important day for women and the kickoff for this series, I ask you to join me in challenging ourselves. Let's be intentional, purposeful, and active in advancing the cause of women in leadership. Our society needs us more now than ever. So thank you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for continuing your own pathway to advancing women in leadership. Thank you.